I would like to start out this morning with a, something a little different. As I look around at our audience, I can say for certainty that we wouldn't have much of a youth group. It'd be pretty slim. I just want to tell you that the times that you don't feel good, and I can say this from experience because I'm getting there. The effort that you make to come to this service is greatly appreciated. I have been a member of a lot of congregations and I can just about put our number on the board before our folks get here. I just want to say to you that I appreciate you very much for the effort that you make to be a part of our worship. Our lesson this morning is probably one that you've heard many times, but I'm going to try to put a little different angle on it this morning. We know that the most important discussion that we can ever have with anybody would be one of salvation. How is it that one is saved? In our society today, we know that there are numerous churches that come together to worship God, and so many of them are in different ways. And we know that we have the Bible. Most of these churches that practice Christianity which are many, I googled, and Google is always right. There is over 200 churches in the United States that claim to worship God and Jesus Christ as their Savior. But why are there 200? We know the Lord's plan for churches was to have one. And he speaks many times of the importance of being united, that we all be in Christ in the same way. Uh, we know, unfortunately, that that's not the case. This morning, our lesson, we're going to talk about what Jesus himself teaches, what Jesus says in the Bible. Now, I'm not discrediting the rest of the Bible, because I know that the Bible is inspired, that God inspired the writers to write what he wanted them to write. But we're going to look at what Jesus said in the Bible concerning himself and how one is saved. I want to read a passage from Second John, the first chapter in the ninth verse, that tells us that anyone who goes too far and does not abide in the teachings of Christ does not have God. But the one that abides in the teaching, he has both God and the Father. Now that makes it pretty clear about where we should stand when we look at the Bible in a, a search of answers for uh, anything that we have in our life that concerns us, but especially this one concern about s salvation. Why is that important to us? Well, for one thing, that uh, God wants us to be as one family in the church. We need to know, each one of us needs to know how we obtain salvation. That's important, isn't it? That's very important in our lives to know that. Also, we need to be able to tell others about how they can receive salvation. And we need to be able to, as a congregation, as a church, be one in our thought about what our purpose here is on this earth and what 
how we are able to obtain salvation. Jesus said this, one must come to him for salvation. The first thing that one must do is to come to Christ for his salvation. No other person, no other thing can we use for that. It's only through Jesus Christ. Peter said in Acts 4.12, And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name given under heaven whereby we must be saved. This is uh, so because no one else in history has done for man what Jesus Christ has done. We know it was God's plan to send his son to this earth to give his life. And we know that Jesus himself, when he came to this earth, he was fully aware of his purpose and what he was supposed to be doing. And that is seeking and saving the lost and giving his life on the cross that takes away our sin. In Matthew 10, 32, Jesus said that we must confess his name. The point that he is making is in order to be saved, we must acknowledge that the only hope that we have is Jesus Christ, that the only he can save us. Jesus said that faith is necessary for salvation. Let's go to the parable of the sower in Luke, the eighth chapter. His disciples began questioning him as to what the parable meant. And he said, to you, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God. And we know that the Holy Spirit was involved in the disciples' teaching. They was teaching what the Holy Spirit, what God wanted them to teach. But to the rest, it is in parables. That would be us. So that seeing that they not see and hearing that they may not understand. Now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those beside the road are those who have heard. Then the devil comes and takes away the word from their heart. So they will not believe and be saved. Once that we have recognized that salvation is in Christ, it is found only in him. And we need to believe and we need to be able to teach others and tell others about the salvation that we enjoy and the hope that we have for eternal life through Jesus Christ. And Jesus pays us an ultimate respect as he gives us free will that our will is free to make that decision. But it's one that is absolutely necessary for us to do. That God the Son accomplished this for us. This uh, leaves little room for our faith in order to complete it. But it does become necessary for us to make that decision on our own. We have to say yes to the eternal God, but without that, yes, the plan, the preparation, and the redemptive work of Christ is all for naught. In order to be saved, Jesus says that we first must believe. Jesus said that repentance is necessary for salvation. Luke 19, beginning with the fifth verse, when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. And he hurried and came down and received him gladly. When they saw it, they all began to grumble, saying, He has gone uh, to the, be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possession I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give them back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, 
Today salvation has come to this house because he too is a son of Abraham for the son of man has come to seek and save that which is lost. Although the story doesn't mention repentance, it is a certainly an example of a man that has turned away from what he was to what God would have him be. And Jesus tells him that he is now of the household of God because of his faith and his belief. And repentance is not just a sorrow for past sins, but a change of attitude about sin in general. We go from being lovers of self and things of the world and to lovers of God and righteousness and holiness and what God wants us to be. Jesus sums up this attitude in Mark the 8th chapter beginning with the 31st or 34th verse. And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. For what does it profit a man to gain the whole world and to forfeit his own soul? For what will a man give in exchange for his soul? For who, whoever is ashamed of me and my word in the adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes to glory of his Father with the holy angels. Repentance is not negotiating with God about how much sin we could have in our in our lives and still be saved. It is a total transformation of our life of living in this world to one that's obedient to God and a follower of Christ and an attitude that our wills will not be what rules our life, but the Heavenly Father that guides us with His Word. Jesus said also that you must be baptized for salvation. Mark 16, 16, he who believes and has been baptized shall be saved, but he who is disbelieved shall be condemned. The first step in denying self is for us to be buried in baptism. Baptism is necessary in order to be saved for many reasons. Acts 2.38 says that at baptism, our sins are forgiven. At baptism, we receive the Holy Spirit. That is a promise of a comforter that will be with us and guide us and help us in times of need. At baptism, we are added to the church, Acts 2.47. At baptism, we put on Christ, Galatians 3.26. 1 Peter 3.21 says that at baptism, we will be saved. Our sins will be washed away. It should be our hope and prayer that we all think the same when it comes to the things that we have to do in order to be saved. And that's plainly stated in many places in the Bible and a lot of places by Jesus himself speaking to us about what we need to do to be saved. Jesus also said this, you must endure to the end. Matthew 10, 22, <clears throat> 22 says this, you will be hated by all because of my name, because it is the one who has endured to the end will be saved. Matthew 10, 22. In this passage and other passages in the Bible, Jesus is teaching 
his disciples about two events that were going to happen. One of them was the destruction of Jerusalem, and many that were there was a part of that. And the second was his second coming, which could come at any time. The message for both events was similar. However, only those who were faithful to the end would be saved. And that's our message today, isn't it? That we have to be faithful to God's word. We have to keep his commandments. If we love God, we will keep his commandments. His, it said that his disciples would suffer. And some of the examples of that, which we do not suffer nearly like the first Christians do, but these things do apply to some of us. It causes family division. Our faith in God, our faith in Jesus as our Savior, the Bible, it will, in some instances, separate us from our family members. A persecution and violence and suffering does happen in other places in the world, not so much here, but persecution, uh, violence, suffering does happen to those that were and are believers in Christ. False teachers, hypocrites will be a part of that. Social and environmental unrest, and we're very familiar with that kind of thing, aren't we? Even in this country today, and unfaithfulness and lack of love by many in the church. And we're also witness to that. His point then is that these things are not to be used as an excuse for us to fall away. Uh, we do not need to think that we can have an excuse for not observing God's commandments. Many times our feelings are hurt over things and people leave the church and some of them are serious, some of them are hurtful, but there is never anything that is important enough for us to lose our salvation over. I think probably the, the one of the purposes that I chose this lesson was that we all need to be on the same page. We all need to understand that the Bible is our only instruction, our only direction, our only hope for salvation is in the Bible. And we have to be submissive to the Word of God in what He says. No matter what happens, no matter how bad that we've been hurt, it still remains our responsibility to be conscious, conscious of our need to remain faithful no matter what comes. And as a way of challenging uh, to examine, uh, we need to always strive to not be a part of dissension and problems. There's always things that come up and, and uh, there's always an answer. There's always a way for us to handle that. So we need to keep that in, in our memory bank. Believe in Christ, confess his name, repent of your sins, and be baptized in Jesus Christ. And then after that, we are to remain faithful to God, no matter what, no matter what comes. I hope that this lesson has been encouragement. It's one that is well known by most that are Christians of how we obtain salvation. And there's no other way. Jesus says there's no other way but through him. He says that if you do not have that, then you're not with God. But if you are faithful to his word and obedient, that God will save you and you will have an eternal life with God. We're going to offer the invitation, and we hope and pray that if you have a need, if you are a Christian, and you have a need uh, that needs to be prayed for, we invite you to come 
and we will do that for you. If you're not a Christian, this is the time for you to make that decision because there's no other way to eternity in heaven without being obedient to God's word. Won't you come now as we stand and sing the song of invitation?